What is going on, everybody? Bobby Fowden, the man, Eric Sheetaber. We're going to be going through week 14 of the NFL season. It's going to be a shorter slate than it, than it has been in the past. We've only got 10 games. And uh, yeah, it's interesting. It's going to should, should be kind of an interesting one. I think you're going to see more, a little more condensed ownership on this slate than, than we've seen the last couple of weeks. Uh, Sheets, any sort of overall takes before you jump in that we jump in the game, game by game? Yeah. Um, listen, this is just the way that NFL works, but I'm starting to see like the same guys, like just kind of show up the same teams, just kind of show up every week. Um, and yeah. that's, you know, that makes, uh, makes sense. Um, you're going to see a, uh, a D, uh, like a, a, a defense that's going to be high, higher, very high owned again this week. Mm -hmm. um, We'll uh we'll get to all that when we get to it, I guess. Yep, and uh, I, I you know the afternoon games are not not quite as you absolutely have to play them as 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 last week. Um, but it certainly is. Uh, there there are there are a couple that we'll get into. All right, let's get into it. Uh, first game on the slate, you got. Let's well, let's get your screen up here. Sure. Um, I am going through my other screen here. Um, all right, uh, Buffalo. And the Jets, uh, with a little bit of rain potentially in Buffalo, I don't know any more advanced weather. It's too early in the week to try and guess it, but that's what I've got. Sheets, what are you doing here? Um, seems like a seems like a good game to get some exposure to. It feels like a lower total, um, but I don't know. It's it, you're going to get a low owned Josh Allen, and I, I feel like a lot of these guys are you know Garrett Wilson's price is going up, but he's just been awesome. What what are you doing here? Well, again, just overall slate preview. I mean, I got like. I got Coors Field at the top, and then I have like six other, and I have six other stacks that are kind of like, kind of tied for second. And it's weird, you know. Buffalo is always going to show up as 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 decent, you know. They have a really good quarterback and really good receiver, and you know they have some other guys you could play. So, um, Jets defense has been reasonable, but it's, they still have a twenty seven implied total, uh, Buffalo, which is really good. And um, like I said, if you get a low on Josh Allen. Um, you know, it, it's it's not the worst idea to try to play him. Um, so even though the Jets, listen, the Jets hung in there. Uh, I, they they had they were on the freaking Minnesota doorstep at the end with the chance to win. Um, mm -hmm. Kind of kind of nuts. They looked like they were getting run out of the building for a little while. Um, they're 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 uh, they're spicy. Uh, maybe it's just spicy enough to make Buffalo score more points. I don't know. We'll see. <laughs> um, Darren Wilson is legit. Uh, I'm not quite getting to him this week just because I don't know, Buffalo, I guess it's a stupid thing to say, but I guess Buffalo's defense is good, but listen, if Buffalo is going to a nine point favorite, I mean, what are the Jets going to do, but throw the ball and, and uh, Darren Wilson is the guy. So, Hey, why not? You play, play Allen, play Diggs, play Gabe Davis, you play Dawson Knox, you run it back with Garrett Wilson and Hey, one o'clock, you're kind of, uh, you're kind of off to the races. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I'm okay with all that. I would I would include Zonovan Knight. I think that Bam Knight is is a really good play here. Actually, um, I know it's a good Buffalo defense, but it, it's pretty clear they're giving the they're giving it to they're giving Knight the the looks here, and he's going to get pass catching work as well as rushing work. Um, I don't think it particularly matters. I don't think they're in love with Michael Carter anyway. And he was on the I mean Zon Knight was on the field like basically the whole game last last yep. week. So I I do like Knight as well. I also think it's worth noting that Corey Davis had 10 targets last week. I know it was a weird game, but it should be a similar type of game flow. And because the corners are so good, Garrett Wilson might get covered. So Corey Davis gets into play for me a little bit and Elijah Moore. I just think it's a good game that you, you if you stack it, you want to go different ways. But, but, but the one play who's who, you know, I know he hasn't had a big game in a while, but Gabe Davis is 5,300. That just seems a little bit too cheap. Um, so both Davises here are in play for me, um, but Gabe Davis at 5,300 feels too cheap. Uh, this is a game, you know, I think Diggs is going to be popular. I think Knight will have some ownership, but I don't think anybody else is getting that much ownership. And I think it's one that we could definitely uh, stack up. So I do have it as one of the games that's uh, very interesting for stacking purposes. All right, next up, we have Cleveland and Cincinnati, which is the game that historically I've, I actually have done really, really well on uh, for whatever reason every year when they, these guys play. Um, well, they play twice a year, so I guess once one of those times, usually I do really well. And uh, this is another time where I want to get some exposure here. So I, I'm going to uh, – uh, Jamar Chase, I, I don't care what anybody tells me. Um, I, I think Jamar Chase is, like, actually underrated. Like, he's so good. And I think that in, in certain ways, because they have so many other receivers, like, maybe he doesn't get to show it as much. You could also argue that it helps him, too. But, like, 
I really like Jamar Chase this week. Um, I think he, he's argue, he's right there as, as being one of the best receivers in football. I think if Mixon is low owned if, and plays, I, I would take some shots there. Um, but I think P Ryan is more likely if, 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 uh, if Mixon's out, I'm happy to go back to P Ryan. And then on the, uh, on the Cleveland side, I don't think they're going to be as terrible as they were last week. And I think Amari Cooper and uh, probably not as much Donovan Peoples Jones for me, but uh, certainly don't mind that this is a game stack and the one I'm, I'm a little bit lower on Chubb just because the the price, but I think he, you know, you can always make it, you can always be open to him. Um, I've had good, ex- good success here. So this is a, a less priority, but uh, it's still an interesting game stack for me. I'm going to tell you who else is really good except for Jamar Chase. Yeah. T Higgins is really good. He is. And I'll tell you who else is really good. Like Joe Burrow is really good. You know, like yeah. those three guys are really good. Um, and I, I'll keep playing those three guys. Um, I have to think that Mixon's going to play. I mean, it's like, freaking concussion protocol. You can't, what are you going to be a percussion? He should, percussion he should be able to. Yeah, I agree. Two with weeks. You. I mean, you know what I mean? Like, so uh, I think he's going to play. I think he's in play as well. Um, as far as Deshaun Watson and the Cleveland offense, I couldn't, couldn't be worse. Right. Uh, uh, they were, they were, oh, they're, they're so far the only team that's made Houston defense look decent in the last like eight weeks. Um, yep. Uh, I think that uh, I think this this spread is fair. Fair. I think Cincinnati could put a beating on them. But listen, I mean, it is his first game back in two years or whatever. You can't. I wasn't expecting much out of him. Um, yeah. I don't know. Maybe. Maybe you know. There's something to be said about not playing football for a year and a half or whatever. Yeah. What do you know? He played for. What is what a surprise. Um, so, uh, but let's go. We'll play these Cincinnati guys again. We'll play Burrow. We'll play Chase. We'll play Higgins and. And, but if, like you said, with like a Cooper, um, seems pure to me. And Boyd, and I would throw Boyd even in the mix too. And Boyd, yeah, dropped, he was good. He was good he last the week. Easiest touchdown pass ever. Yeah, I know. I know. <laughs> that was pretty bad. Um, but other than that, it looked you know it looked good. It, it really kind of threw my whole thing up because I had a lot of Boyd, but I also had a lot of Burrow, and I needed that extra touch. You know what I mean? It just was like one of those frustrating plays for me. But uh, but I think right off the bat, we have a couple of games that I definitely think are, are stack worthy. Um, which is kind of against seven K is tough to play, but. Yeah, it's a little it's a little much for Higgins, I think, as a secondary receiver. I think that he's still priced up as the number one. Um, I think I think you're for me, it's more going to be the the chase and potentially Boyd. But do but do keep in mind that Hayden Hurst is out also. So um, that does that does open up potentially more receiving options uh, for, for them because uh, they, they do throw the ball to the tight end a little bit. And I tell you, you know, like I'm, I'm like I'm like spewing off like salary doesn't matter. Right. So you play all these guys. I just said, I mean. You don't, you don't leave yourself with too much to do. I mean, you don't leave yourself with too much in, in, in terms of running back value and stuff like that. Yeah, um, you end up with Zonovan Knight and uh, and who else? Uh, the I don't know, actually. Uh, <laughs> who else, to be honest with you? Lat Murray? I don't know. DeAndre Swift? I don't think so. Um, yeah, you're right. It is a little uncomfortable. All right. So next we have Houston, Dallas. This is going to be a bloodbath. I don't even really know the path that doesn't make this a bloodbath. <laughs> Maybe you can get something out of Damian Pierce before all the other guys go off. Uh, both Zeke and and Pollard are, are, are I think, interesting enough just because they get there so often. You've got Collins as a cheap wide receiver option, which I think is kind of interesting. C.D. Lamb is kind of interesting. But nothing that I feel like I really want to commit to in this game. Um, Dalton Schultz would be in play, but like, how much are they going to really lean on their offense here? And Dak Prescott is early in the week is showing up as the highest owned quarterback. I don't know, man. I, I think I would lean. I, I think that both these running backs will have big games here. And uh, if it was up to me, I'll just play Pollard, but Pollard or, or Zeke, I think are totally in play. And I think that they win this game pretty easily. Dallas defense is going to be a 25% owned. Um, even at 3,800, I think. You think, you think at that, that, that price, huh? I mean, you know what it is also? People people saw last week, they saw Cleveland. No, Cleveland wasn't popular, but you saw what happens to a slate when you score 30 as a defense. You know what I mean? And and yeah. and, 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 and you look and you look at, at Dallas and you look what they can we can generate defensively as far as turnovers and stuff goes. And they even had one like call back last week, you know, like uh, a defensive touchdown. And Houston is just, you know, just 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 the pits. Um, the only thing is it's going to be, you know, it's, it's always tough to play 3,800 defense. Like, 
uh, when, when there's not that much val other value. So I don't know. I, I still think people are going to pound that. And um, uh, Dak, CeeDee Lamb, Schultz, I mean, they're going to put up their 30. You know, I don't know if they're going to score 50, but they'll they, – but. No, I wouldn't get too more too worried about the blowout when all you really not all you really need. Like they're gonna put up 30 points. You know what I mean? Like if they before they even think about whether they need to put up more, you know? So so not too worried about that. And I'll maybe I'll have more. What one, one thing that I think you can do is you play you get yourself a little different, is if you're gonna play Pollard and or Zeke, play them without the Dallas defense, you know. Or if you play the Dallas defense, play them without the the, the running backs because all the optimizers are so sharp now. You know they're such so, such so, you know they're such wise wise guys. They're all gonna just just go for that correlation. They're all gonna they're all gonna say, listen, we're gonna put Zeke in with the defense, or we're gonna play Pollard in with the defense. So that's one way you could you could do you could be somewhat different. You know, get a little edge over the optimizers is play Dallas defenses with no Dallas running backs or something like that. Yeah, um, or, or or play. Um like play Michael Gallup. <laughs> um, well, yeah, I, I think, I think he might be the best play of this. It's funny. Cause we say that they're going to put up 30 points. They just put up 54 and nobody got there for Except right. for Gallup would be the closest at 18 fantasy points at 4,600, but nobody would have gotten there for this size slate, even when they scored 54 points. So I do I'll think take my chance. I'll take my chances. <laughs> well, yeah, if they score 54, <laughs> but if they score 30, I'm just saying it's not, I don't think no. it's a guarantee that they get there. No, no, that's, um, that's true. And, and I think that, you know, Nico Collins had 10 targets. I mean, he's been targeted like crazy, just very few of them completed. Um, and Cooks is back this week. But I do think Collins is in play. And I think that Jordan Akins at tight end, uh, someone no one is looking at, but, you know, has put up 16 a couple weeks ago against Miami. They're going to have to throw the ball a lot. They do tend to use him quite a bit as for quick drop-offs, which they're going to need some of. Um, so Jordan Akins is in play. But this is definitely not my favorite game on the slate. This is, this is definitely the the – ultra Damian Pierce, Pierce troll week. I mean, this Seriously, is right? this, this is like the best because he's going to, because he's done nothing for like three weeks because he's had tough matchups and now it's like the worst matchup. And not only that, but people are going to be playing Dallas defense and, and they're going to be playing Dallas running backs with the Dallas defense and Pierce is going to be like 2% owned or something like that. Oh it's, yeah. Get like two touchdowns and 180 or something like that. Yeah. Right. Off the bat, <laughs> 75 yard touchdown by, by Pierce is the first, the first click. That'd be so. That would be awesome. That, that yeah, that's would, that's DFS. That's DFS legend. It just happens so much. It feels almost unreal how the troll games happen. Like it's, it's we and they get called out and they always happen. All right, all right. So now I'm guessing this is Coors, right? Yep. <laughs> all right, Sheets. Um, what do you got here? Every week. I mean, whoever Detroit plays, it doesn't even matter if it's in Detroit. It helps. You know what I mean? Like yeah. Um, whoever Detroit plays is in play, and Detroit's in play every week, and uh, and uh, fifty point total, close spread. Just you know who's getting the ball, and you know what I mean. You have the only question is again, and this is this has become a real thing the last two or three years. And you you you've been on top of this a lot. Is listen, just because the receivers are necessarily are going to be a good plays, and just because their points are going to be put up, I mean, your quarterback to win slates like this has got to put up points. I mean, you have guys like you know like Hertz and and Allen and and guys that. And Justin Ooh. Fields, I don't even know if Justin Fields is on the slate, but just as an example, you know, or Lamar, if you were healthy, whatever. when you have guys like that, you can put up like 35 fantasy points as the quarterback. It's not so, it's not so clear. So, okay, 50 point total. Uh, you know, Justin Jefferson's really good. So, hey, let's just play Cousins. Well, you know, it's not, it's not exactly that easy. You know, like, mm -hmm. like what's, what's Cousins going to do if he, if he gives it, scores two touchdowns, he gives up, he throws two touchdown passes. And for 280 or something like that, that like busts Nothing. pretty much. Yeah, you know what yep. I mean. Like so, so uh, it's not so easy. Uh, nonetheless, and they do project to be the best stack, whatever that's worth. Um, and I'm getting mostly T.J. Hawkinson as the second receiver um, from Minnesota, uh, as opposed to Thielen for some reason. Mm -hmm. um, maybe because Thielen hasn't done much this season. Um, so those guys, and then obviously, you know, I'm Ron St. Brown is just. <laughs> they just refuse to they refuse to price him to his talent if you want it's, it's amazing um He's finally finally got him up a little bit at least a little bit you know but you know you know if, if uh dante if Devontae Adams were on the slate he'd be 9k again right i mean I presume oh yeah why is it why is him on st brown you know whatever any worse um so uh yeah he's a good play he's gonna be 20 percent owned as he always is um 
and I guess that's how you could start. Uh, yep. DJ Shark, I suppose, would be the next guy. And uh, that's about it. Yeah, it's I, I like stacking this game without the receivers. Um, was that without the quarterbacks? Oh, all right. Okay. okay. Um, excuse me. Uh, I, I like uh, – this is one of the first times I've said this in a while. I, I really like Dalvin Cook this week. Um, and I think that he can run all over this team. I also like – so Jamal Williams leads. This is pretty. A couple wild things about this game. One, it's very strange for a ten and two team to go into a team that's four and seven or five and seven or whatever they have, five and seven, and be an underdog. No, Detroit's a lock. Like the first thing that Matt Matt texted me. I think me, Detroit's like, a lock too. Like last night, like, the Sunday night. Is like, can you ask me a question? Why is a team at four and seven favored over a team that like well because they're a lock? It's it's just the it's just the way it is. Yep, and and they're playing great by the way. Detroit yep. is. Um, so I, I I I like this game. My favorite play is probably Hawkinson Cook on that side, and then I like you can go Williams or Swift. Swift got more run last week because uh, he was playing well, had a little bit of burst, and also they were up by a bunch. I think it could easily be Jamal Williams or Swift. So one of those two, and then St. Brown as you mentioned, uh, and then mildly interested in in DJ Chark as a uh, as a secondary option. So uh, definitely definitely a game that you're going to want exposure to. I the one guy I'm not getting to is just. Jefferson's price is hard for me to get to, uh, to be honest. Like, I don't think he's that much better of a play than T Higgins or St. Brown or these other guys in the seven K's that I just, I'll take my chances on stacking up these seven K guys and, and hoping they outscore Jefferson and play some more Hawkinson, Thielen and cook instead. Yeah. The Vikings are 10 and two. And, and it's so funny. Like, the Vikings are 10 and two. I actually have them to win the Super Bowl at 26 to one. And I feel like it's totally dead money. You know what I mean? Like, I feel as though it literally has no chance to win, even though they're 10 and 2. Um, it, it's it's funny. You know what reminds me of? So this, this goes back in the day, but when I, Alan Iverson was playing and the Sixers were really good, remember that that year where, uh, what's his name, Iverson stepped on Tyrone Lue? Like, after he uh, he made a three in, like, the game one of the NBA Finals, and Tyrone Ron Lue uh, played for the Lakers, and, and Alan Iverson famously, like, just stepped over stepped him. Stepped over like, him, yeah, I was at that game. So I had, I had, I bet on the Sixers, like, like the, after like 10 games of the regular season, right? <laughs> Getting like 20 to one to win the NBA championship. Okay. Imagine this, like after like 10 games and they had to fade all this stuff the whole season, right? They got, they got made it to the playoffs. They got through every freaking playoff run and then they get to the play the Lakers and you know what their odds were in the finals? 15 to one. Yeah, exactly. That's what I was going to say. I thought, <laughs> I, think it was, I thought it was 14 or 15 to one. 15 to uh, one. So I went through all that to get to the finals. And I, I just waited. <laughs> like, if I'm not mistaken, they, even after they won game one in LA, I think they yeah. were still 10 something to one or something. Yeah. And then they were not competitive. The rest of the, the, rest of the series was I got a feel about the Vikings in my 26 to one. I mean, I just wish I could sell it for like, for like 40 to one. <laughs> it's like, yeah, it's, no, exactly. <laughs> you sell it off and lose, lose money on it, even though they've been like way that. better than expected. Um, Speak, right. speaking of speaking of overrated teams, um, overrated. To, whoa, 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 whoa! You're talking about the Giants. Giants. Oh, okay. Giants! I was like gonna say with the Eagles. Come on, man. Uh, so I um, let me tell you something about Philly Giants games, like at Giant Stadium. Like the, these games are just the, the definition of of like heartbreak for for Giants fans. Went way way back, like in the fir the first the first game. Ready for this? How old I am? The first game I ever went to at Giants Stadium, back when it was called Giants Stadium, was the game where Joe Pisarczyk fumbled the ball for the Herman Edwards uh, uh, miracle oh uh, return. I was at that game in the end zone oh when, when he ran it right in. And after that, it was just nonstop. It was it was Randall Cunningham uh, beating the Giants. It was I remember I was playing a tournament, a poker tournament in AC, when all the Giants had to do was not punt the ball to Deshaun Jock Jackson. Oh, right, right. And they punched it to Deshaun Jackson, and he scored a touchdown to win the game. Um, so it's been Philly doing it to the Giants, uh, like, for as long as I've been alive. And it was a Jake Elliott had a 62-yard field goal or something like that, just just kind of nonstop. I think it ends here. I think Ooh. I think I think the Giants put up a nice game here Ooh. and keep and keep and keep and keep it close. Um, however, that is uh that doesn't change the fact that you know. Jalen Hurts is just like a great player. Yeah. I mean, he, just, he, yep. he just is. And and best offensive and, line in football doesn't hurt either. And ooh, probably the best and, receivers. And, and and he's got Devontae Smith and AJ Brown to keep yeah. everybody honest, you know. And you want to just like, hey, you want to stop the run? No problem. You know, have yep. fun. Um, 
They're a freaking machine. And this is another total, which is kind of, I, I almost say this jokingly, you see the total is 44 and a half. I'm like, what about the Giants? What part? about the Giants? Right. <laughs> yeah, exactly. It'd be crazy. Um, and Philadelphia's not the greatest defensively either. Um, so I, I can see the Giants putting up a couple of scores. I just don't know exactly where, where it would come from, except for Saquon. I, I don't, I don't feel like, like playing Giants receiver roulette, you know? Um, so I'll, I'll maybe, I'll maybe I'll do, uh, hurts with, you know what you could do? I mean, really, this is what you're supposed to do. You're supposed to play, uh, I'm on St. Brown, like you said with some Minnesota receiver and run it back with like Jalen Hurts. <laughs> that's, right. that's really what you're supposed to do. And it's like this big thing that I've been like fight, fight the last three years, you know, and I don't want to do that. It is like a perfect slate for something like that, you know, or maybe even like a run, maybe a Josh Allen make it or something like that. One of, one of, one of those, one of those quarterbacks, you know what I mean? Yeah. Um, and run it back with the better receivers. Maybe that's not the worst idea in the world because Jalen Hurts can, he could score two touchdowns on the ground in this game. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. The other guy I, I want to ask you about, I mean, I don't know. We don't really talk too much about running backs yet, but I don't know. Is, is Miles Sanders the worst play in the world? I don't know. Uh, so that's, that's my opinion. It's, it's a low total. So it, nothing's going to show up as be that great, but I still think that you're just not supposed to ignore the fantasy points that these, this Philadelphia offense can, can generate, even though if you don't know exactly where it's coming from. Yeah, I, I agree. Um, I, I may just have to just throw in and close my eyes as a stack here because I, I don't really love this game as a stacking game. No. The Giants tend to play a little bit slower and that they're running and all that. Um, but the Eagles doesn't really matter. I mean, we just saw them play Tennessee and they put up 30 in no time. Um, yeah, I, I think that like I'm, I'm off of most of the plays for DFS, but I guess I can get a stack in here. The only thing I would say is that w- I might play a little bit of roulette with Richie James or Isaiah Hodgins. Um, you don't like Slayton? Slayton is just a little more expensive. Okay. It's just that the price is not not quite as conducive. I, the, other, the reason I'm considering the other guys because I think they're going to have to throw the ball, and um, I'll take a shot on the 35, 3,600 guys who are, you know, at least talented and, and going to get some action. So um, that's pretty much all I have as a priority for this game. Who else Who else uh, in this game? Hold on a minute. Who, who else is on the receiving court here? Hey, Kenny Galladay still on the team. He's still on the team. He didn't play last. He was a scratch last week. Oh, goodness. We'll um, see. We'll see. Yeah, keep an eye. If Holiday and, like, Sills are, are out, that means I, I feel a little better about James and just because they'll be on the field more. Did Bellinger get any work? Yeah, he got five, he got five targets. Yeah, probably. I just think it's the wrong. Yeah. I think Daniel Jones on his own is actually – Daniel Jones with one of those cheapos might be a, might be another interesting way to go because he can he can run his way into a big game. All right, what do you got? We got next. Oh, well, you have you have probably you have no Lamar, right? Um, the least interesting game on the slate for sure. You have no Lamar and uh, Lamar. They're they're um, they're vulnerable. Uh, I think Pittsburgh's going to win again. Pittsburgh's been playing really really well. Um, mm-hmm. uh, I think they're going to win again, and I just don't know what I'm going to do fantasy wise in this game. Uh, is 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 what's name healthy again? Najee Harris, I don't know, maybe, maybe Najee Harris isn't the worst play in the world, coming off of two straight 10 fantasy point games, you know, whatever. Um, uh, Pickens, I think, is legit. I think that Deontay Johnson and Pickens, uh, excuse me, and Pickett, I think you could stack Pittsburgh, but again, they're just not a big scoring team. You know, Friar Muth is always going to be a good, good tight end play, um, so I like him. I can't play it. I don't think I can play anybody from Baltimore. I just don't think I can do it. Yeah, I don't think I can either. <laughs> um, like, what would the price have to be on Huntley in order to play Huntley to play him? Like, if he That's was like not my style, you know, like no, I, I me either. But um, for what it's worth, he he can he can do some things with his legs, but it's not going to matter for you know a big slate or anything. For a small like if it was a showdown, we could talk about it. Um, Kenyon Drake and and Edwards kind of been splitting a little bit, but no interest there. I, I do think the Pittsburgh side has some plays. I think Najee Harris, as you mentioned, 5,800, very reasonable. I think Deontay Johnson or Pickens uh, or Friar Muth are all available. I would probably just limit it to one of those guys because I don't think there's going to be enough points scored in this game, but I think all of those guys in their own, in their own right are, are all, you know, in a vacuum, pretty good plays. All right, next up, we've got Jacksonville, Tennessee. Sheets, you got, what do you got here? Anything? I have, um, 
Trevor Lawrence is questionable to a toe. Not a big deal for me. I mean, I presume Derrick Henry's the best running back this week. Uh, I'm just guessing. Uh, it's got to be 20%. Well, I shouldn't, shouldn't say that because who might be higher? Are you going to get him in? Um, I don't know. I, I, maybe, maybe, maybe that's not the question. Maybe the question is you should play him. I don't know. I, I, I like, uh, it's Derek Henry. It's December. It's, it's, uh, you know, it's a good matchup. They're seven, you know, six point favorite. Um, I don't know. Sounds good to me. I'll, I'll take a shot on the Jacksonville side. Uh, I said this last week and it turns out Philadelphia put up more fantasy points, but I usually don't want to mess with Tennessee. Um, Tennessee's defense. Um, I don't know. Etienne at 6,400. Maybe that's a, that's a good play though. Um, so Etienne, Lawrence, who somebody busted really hard last week. Zay Jones, right? Zay Jones at seven targets, two receptions, three fantasy points. And this is, listen, you want to know why wide receivers is volatile. Just look at the last two weeks, you know, like, uh, Mm -hmm. it's the way it is sometimes. Um, so I guess Derek Henry makes, makes sense. And that's really all I came up with. Yeah, if Lawrence plays, I think that Kirk and Jones, Zay Jones, are definitely in play. Uh, I wouldn't play Etienne against this. This defense doesn't give up anything to running backs. They no. do, however, you can throw it all over them. Um, they don't have corners, and they like to play one on one. So we, I, I don't know why they were playing one on one against AJ Brown and Devontae Smith last week. Um, I'm sure they kind of regret it, but they literally they stuck by their guns. They they played them all man to man the whole game, and uh, it did not work. So uh, Kirk and Zay Jones are in play and Derrick Henry is obviously going to look like a tremendous play. Uh, Probably worth noting that he hasn't had a good game in a while, but I don't think that, I mean, there's been Philly was a tough matchup game script wise, even though they had to, they were playing from behind so much, but couldn't do anything against Cincinnati either. Um, This is a better matchup. I think that Derrick Henry is obviously a really, really strong play and probably where you start your cash game build. I think he, he would be in terms of cash ahead of the other 78, what hundred receivers like the chases and the St. Browns because of uh, just the more, the more assured work, I guess you'd say. Um, All right. What do we got next sheets? Uh, Yeah, we got, we got something sneaky here. I think Um, this is a weird one. Well, Kansas city against Denver. We can't um, do it, can we? Can't, can't. Please don't recommend Denver. Oh, no, no, no. So, so hang on a minute. Okay. So, so, so it's a 43 and a half point total, and then we're going to talk about Denver's. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> uh, uh, Kansas City's been, been, oh, been, you know, they, they, listen, it was a really, really good game last week. You know, Cincinnati just got, you know, Cincinnati's just, got them three times in a row now, right? Um, and that was a good game. It's definitely a, a, definitely a tough spot for Kansas city. And I definitely like Denver against the spread, but let me, let me sell you on a couple of ideas for Denver. First of all, like you said, like I said, um, you do want to try to control the ball. So I do like Lamont Murray at 5,200. Latavius um, Murray. What's that? Latavius Murray. Yeah. Oh, sorry about that. Uh, no, Latavius no, no, no. Murray, 5,200. Yeah. And then I got something else for you. I mean, you have, what's his name? Cor- Cor- uh, Cortland Sutton. He, he had one target and he got 40% of snaps and then got pulled out of the game with hamstrings, whatever it is. I mean, if he's out, you're gonna have a 3,400 Hinton um, for Denver in a game where they have to be coming from behind. Uh, that's gonna be that's gonna be tough to ignore. Not to mention Jerry Judy at 5,400. So um, if Sutton is in fact out, I think both those guys are gonna pop, um, or at least in my head, at least they should. Now on the Kansas City side, you know, don't. Um, don't think that uh, Denver's defense is, you know, is is unbeatable just because they're they're Denver and they're at home. I mean, Kansas City is coming off a loss. They they like to put up points and and they, they don't project all that great, but it's still freaking Mahomes and it's still Kelsey and 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 you can still play. I don't know who you're going to play, MBS, Schuster, whatever it is. So it's not the worst thing. They're not exactly in my top tier, but if you ever get those guys really low owned, um, it may not be the worst idea in the world. But for me. I'll probably lose with Lamont Mur- Lamont Murray, with Tavis Murray, and I'm almost definitely going to lose with one of those receivers if something's out. Yeah. Um, Dorch, Dorch, uh, Dorch, the tight end, by the way. Uh, yeah, Dul- Dulcich. I, I like Dulcich as my favorite play here for for the Broncos. Uh, I've the Kendall Hinton thing is is no different than what it's been, even if Sutton's out because Judy's been out, and 
Hinton never oh, I think he okay. ten. He had ten fantasy points one time. Um, a lot. No, <laughs> I'll take a shot on him, but I, I don't think it's a I don't think it's a great play um, mm-hmm. on its own. And then I'm I'm just curious, like what's going to happen here with the Kadarius Tony? Is he going to be available? Like I don't know. I don't really want to attack one of the best defenses in football in Denver. Um, but you know, a low own, a low own Mahomes to, to Kelsey with one of the other cheapos is always kind of interesting, but I, I think for me, this is more of a pass. Huh. Um, all right, let's move on to the next one. Uh, you have Seattle or, or San Francisco? San Francisco. I have Tampa against San Francisco. Okay. And, and, and so we got, we have the, uh, once in future Brock Purdy. Um, taking over for the oft injured uh, Jimmy Garoppolo. How good is San Francisco, though? You know what I mean. Like, it's just, well, I think yeah. that's an upgrade. I think we should start with that. I think that I think Purdy is a clearly an upgrade from. I think everybody's an upgrade in San Francisco. There, one's bad. It's bad as the next. I mean, it's like uh, Purdy's good. They they have they have well, they have they have Debo Samuel. They have Christian McCaffrey. They have a defense you can't do anything against. You know, I don't, who needs a quarterback? You know what I mean? He just just. Throw it out of the backfield, hand the ball off, and just freaking manage the game, and just let the team, rest of the team, just freaking dominate. You know. Yep. Um, well, at least we haven't heard. Um, I, I really thought this was going to be the time it's, that uh, we get the, uh, yeah, what's his name? Uh, we get Kaepernick. I don't know. It's possible. I thought I really thought it was going to come into play again at some point, but I guess too many years have passed at this point. Uh, yeah, and this is a thirty-seven point total. Well, let's. Let's 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 listen. We're gonna we're gonna shout it out again. I mean, when every people just want to bury this freaking dude, Tom Brady just freaking flexes, man. I mean, literally, I even look at look at the Twitter throughout the last games. Like, this is why he's dead. He's dead. He stinks. But he was terrible. I mean, in all fairness, he was pretty but, terrible the other. Whatever day. it is, man, yeah. he gave him the ball down up six and eighty yards to go, and you know you, and then he just freaking marches. It's freaking, he's like, you, what what he has? Guess listen, he doesn't have the arm strength he did. But he still has like the greatest like quarterback IQ. Him and Ma- Peyton Manning have the two co- greatest quarterback IQ in history. And you know, and and they'll find whoever is whoever is open, whatever they give them, and they give them, they gave him every little every little short pass down the field, wide open, and he found them. You know, and uh, he knows exactly how much time is on the clock, and it's it's rough out there. Now this game, thirty-seven and a half. It's it's. I think that's too too high. I mean, like I just really? don't see any, I don't see anybody scoring here at all. I, I I just I just I just don't see it. I I can't play anybody this game. Um, McCaffrey, I mean, not against not against Tampa. Yeah, I mean, uh, I think that I think I think this game is the official prediction will be will be nine three. I mean, I really, I really just – and look, like Godwin's obviously – he's got talent. I mean, like, they're, they're guys that can do stuff on both sides of this, like the Debo and, 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 and McCaffrey, whatever. I can't imagine Tampa scoring more than 10 points. In this game. Well, because Tom Brady gets rid of the ball so quick, what do you see? From, so what, I, what I see is you get 700 targets to Chris Godwin every week because he lines up in the slot. Good man. Yeah. It, it's going to be Chris Godwin, and it's going to be the running backs, and it's going to be the tight ends who Tom, Tom Brady throws the ball to. Kate Otten had 10 targets the other day. <laughs> like, I know they threw, threw the ball 54 times, but why would they? Yeah, Bray, and Bray was out, obviously. Bray was out, yeah, yeah. But, like, still, um, worth noting, and he had the game-winning touchdown, I believe. Um, or was it the one that caught him? I can't remember. But maybe well, he certainly had every other possession that drive. It wasn't the touchdown. Yeah, so I'm actually a little different than you on this game. I actually like Ooh, the over. And nice. I, okay. I really like Debo Samuel. Ooh, uh, I, don't, right. I don't care about the, the recent lack of huge games. This is the best 6,100 receiver, like maybe in the history of our, of our, our playing DFS. This guy is right. It was right there in all the conversations as the best receiver in the NFL with all those other guys. And because he's been a little bit down this year, partially he'd been banged up partially because they added McCaffrey. I think it's going to be harder for them to run the ball. Um, and I think that, I think Debo's Debo's a really good play. I think George Kittle's a really good play here. I think both of one of those two guys has, has a really good game here. And I think you could even throw Ayuk into the mix, to be honest with you. Um, uh, I'm not going to quite get to Juwan Jennings, but he, you know, this guy, Mr. Mr. I have at least one, two touchdown game every year. He just had it though. So maybe he's not going to do it again. Um, but I love Godwin and I love Samuel or Kittle. I, that's, that's what I, what I've got in this game. What do you think of, um, what do you think of Baker going to the Rams? 
<laughs> it's like my nightmare come true. But the worst, the worst quarterback in the NFL. Great. We got him. I really hope he doesn't play well. If he plays well one game, oh my God, that means we're going to have to deal with potentially thinking about Baker for next season. Ugh, I really hope that doesn't become the case. All right. So here's, here's, here's sucker bet number 737 on the slate um, in, in NFL. I just I, I would like I would like to just throw out a like a poll to like everybody in the entire universe about about this game that doesn't like follow sports betting whatever it is and what they think the spread should be and if, if there's anybody on the face of the earth that would take Carolina plus only three and a half against Seattle um, I I just the whole thing doesn't make sense which obviously of course means Carolina's a lot right but but um, boy oh boy this is this is like some rough respect for San Fran for Carolina and and some rough lack of it for freaking Gino and the Seattle Seattle guys I mean, they lose one they even lose and they came they won that game at the end right they won it, but they I mean you know, it was rough obviously that's a rough game to be close <laughs> it was definitely rough out there but I, I don't know I mean Seattle certainly is looking again like like a good play because you know what I mean I just you just know who's getting the ball you know it's a <laughs> Uh, Geno Smith, first of all, has had an incredibly efficient season. You've had Lockett and, and, and Metcalf, who are always target monsters, and then and then you have what's his name? And you have have Walker, who, by the way, um, he could be available, you know. But if he's out, uh, look at all look at all this all, look at all this questionable stuff for 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 Seattle. I don't know. Maybe a running back could open up as well. I mean, I I just. Listen, I know Carolina's defense has been stout, you know, but but hell, I mean, I, I'll just go right back to all these Seattle guys who want to know the truth. And mm -hmm. you got you got DJ Moore as an easy run back. And the other thing about this game is that um, uh, what could be the not so sneaky play will be Deontay Foreman. I think um, I like that play though. Yeah, I like it a lot. Uh, and hopefully, it just kind of gets ignored a little bit. This is this is I think Carolina's. First of all, I think it's Carolina's path. And also, I mean, you just look at these numbers. I mean, it, just, it is what it is. I mean, every once in a while, I'll put up a bad game, you know. But 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 these these hundred yard results are just you can't ignore it at this price, you know. Right. So um, uh, I definitely think he's gonna hopefully not gonna be the complete, you know, everybody's such a wise guy and he ends up being twenty percent own type guy. But uh, I, I definitely like that. Yeah, I I, I I weirdly like this game stack a little bit. Um, and it's a lot to do with pricing. Um I, I I like the prices on Lockett and Metcalf. I think that they're very, very, very fair. Um, and and i I'll I'll have interest in, in playing at least one of those guys. And and I think you could play both with with uh Gino and feel okay about it. I do I do have respect for the Panthers defense. Um, but I think that Seattle at home has been able to move the ball against most people. Um so I, I, I like it. So it's pretty simple. It's four men or more on one side, and then you've got Metcalf and Lockett on the other, and then potentially a backup running back in DJ Dallas or the starting running back in Kenneth Walker. So I, I'm into this game. I, I think this Excuse is me. How about what might be the best play of them all? How about 3,100? Nope. No offense. Finally actually put up a game, uh, yep. at least a little bit of a game. And he's been more a part of things, you know what I mean? So, so, so I agree with you. I, I yeah, like, why not get a little fans in there? I like. I mean, let me tell you something. I mean, let's, we put those 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 shells of those Cincinnati stacks in, or those other stacks in, and see how impossible it was to play. Look, look what you do if you if you if you just jam in these Seattle and these the, the yep. cheapo DJ Moore at fifty five hundred. Yep. You know, and you can you and then put it put in a cheapo Dulcet or 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 make make it fan at thirty one hundred, and then you can just do whatever. Yep, I agree. Um, I, I, I totally, this is a, this, and, and it, yeah, you could, you could even incorporate parts from the other game if you want to do that. Like, and you could play Derrick Henry pretty easily if you wanted to do this. Yep. I, I think it is an interesting game from that perspective. It will, it wouldn't surprise me, however, if it ends up like 12 to 10 or something <laughs> like, and, 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 and I also, as, 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 as you were sort of alluding to, I, I like Carolina to cover that one too. <laughs> um, right. Uh, they just, it just, I just think it's going to happen. Um, all right. About, so, uh, what about what about defenses? So, I currently have like Cowboys is kind of a ridiculous projection here, but but the next the next one is is pretty obvious too, and that would be Pittsburgh at twenty eight hundred. Yeah. You know, against the, against Baltimore's quarterback. Yeah, and even though I like this game, I think the Panthers' defense is good enough at twenty two hundred to to be yeah, the next one for me. Absolutely. Um, and and 
And by the way, you know who's been throwing a ton of interceptions and sometimes holds the ball a little too long is Josh Allen and the Jets. The Jets. He team. does. Yes, he does. Uh, he leads the league in interceptions. Um, I'll, t- I'll tell you what else. Even though you're Mister Mister Purdy's or whatever, I think that uh, yeah, Tampa like twenty nine hundred reasonable also. Tampa at 29 and, 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 and San Francisco at 32. I like the defense is a little too much, which is why I don't have as many games this week. I do agree that D- Detroit, Minnesota is the best one. Um, I like Cleveland, Cincinnati, New York, Buffalo, and then Carolina, Seattle as my favorites. Um, I'm interested in uh, De- my favorite plays, Derrick Henry, Dulcich, Debo or Kittle, Godwin, Fant, uh, Foreman or Moore from Carolina, Lockett or Metcalf. Um, one of the, one of the Steelers, Najee, Johnson, Pickett, and, or Fryer Muth, I'm good with all of them. Uh, Michael Gallup, those are sort of the priority guys I have from this early look. I'm gonna tell you, man, this is I, 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 I really am into this. The, the winning, the winning the million dollars, or at least making sure everybody loses the million dollars play with 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 the the first play out of the gate into the teeth of the freaking crowd. Have freaking Damian Pierce just breaking one for eighty. <laughs> right, it was, right, seriously, right down the sideline. Busting the Dallas defense, busting all the running back plays, yep. busting all of it in one play. Yep, absolutely. I I, I have a weird <laughs> suspicion that you might be onto something bizarre. Or or it could be the you know nine for four and you know, it's like that's no, you you could literally end up with like two fantasy points, or you could end up right. with thirty. Yeah, yeah. Anyway, it should be a fun week, guys. We'll be uh, I'll be uh, recording some other ones later this week, and yep. uh, keep an eye out for that. And good luck to everybody.